Africa is the second largest continent after Asia, covering about one fifth of the total land surface of Earth. The continent is bounded on the west by the Atlantic Ocean, on the north by the Mediterranean Sea, on the east by the Red Sea and the Indian Ocean, and on the south by the mingling waters of the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. Africa's total land area is approximately 11,724,000 square miles, and the continent measures about 5,000 miles from north to south, and about 4,600 miles from east to west. The continent is cut almost equally in two by the equator, so that most of Africa lies within the tropical region, bounded on the north by the Tropic of Cancer, and on the south by the Tropic of Capricorn. Because of the bulge formed by Western Africa, the greater part of Africa's territory lies north of the equator. Africa is crossed from north to south by the prime meridian, zero degrees longitude, which passes a short distance to the east of Accra, Ghana. In antiquity, the Greeks are said to have called the continent Libya and the Romans to have called it Africa. However, the name Africa was chiefly applied to the continent's northern coast, which was regarded as a southern extension of Europe. The whole of Africa can be considered a vast plateau, rising steeply from narrow coastal strips, and consisting of ancient crystalline rocks. The physiography of Africa is essentially a reflection of the geologic history and geology that is described in the previous section. The continent is composed largely of a vast rigid block of ancient rocks in the highlands of the Atlas Mountains and the Cape Ranges in the south. Between these mountainous areas is a series of plateau surfaces with huge areas that are level or slightly undulating, above which stand occasional harder and more resistant rock masses. Kilimanjaro is the highest point on the continent measuring 19,340 feet, and the lowest is Lake Asal below sea level in Djibouti measuring 515 feet. In proportion to its size, Africa has fewer high mountains and fewer lowland plains than any other continent. The limited areas above 8,000 feet are either volcanic peaks or resistant masses. All the land below 500 feet occurs within 500 miles of the coast, except for two small basins in the Sahara. The higher areas of the south and east, are in marked contrast to the considerably lower elevation of the western and northern parts of the continent. South of a line drawn from near the mouth of the Congo River to the Gulf of Aden, most of the land lies 1,000 feet or more above sea level, and much of it exceeds 3,000 and even 4,000 feet. North of the line there is relatively little land above 3,000 feet, most of the area being between 500 and 1,000 feet above sea level, there are also broad coastal lowlands, except in the region of the Atlas Mountains. The highest extensive areas are to be found in Ethiopia, parts of which exceed 15,000 feet. 
Southward, the East African Plateau is highest in Kenya, where it is often 8,000 feet or more above sea level. Of course, the volcanic peaks are much higher, such as Kilimanjaro, Mount Kenya, Meru, and Elgin. The East African Rift System constitutes the continent's most striking and distinctive relief feature. Associated with its formation was the volcanic activity responsible for most of the higher peaks of East Africa. Seismic and volcanic disturbances are still recorded in the western portions of the Rift Valley system. In the Virunga Mountains, northeast of Lake Kivu, there are periodic outbursts that have created a series of lava flows. In general, soil types on the African continent may be divided into five or six broad categories. There are desert soils, chestnut brown soils, which border the deserts, and chernisyum like soils, which are found immediately south of the chestnut soils from Sudan westward to just beyond the Niger Bend, up to East Africa, Zambia, Zimbabwe, and South Africa. In addition, there are black soils, found on the Accra plains of Ghana, red tropical soils and laterites, which occur in the tropical wet and dry and equatorial climatic zones, and Mediterranean soils, found in the Atlas Mountains of North Africa and the Cape region of South Africa. The most important factors that affect soil formation are climate, parent material, relief, drainage, vegetation cover, and the passage of time. Where the land has been generally stable and fairly flat for prolonged periods, as in Africa, the climate becomes one of the major determinants of the soil groups. As I mentioned earlier, a number of factors influence the climate of the African continent. First, most of the continent, which extends from 35 degrees south to about 37 degrees north latitude, lies within the tropics. Second, the nearby section of the continent by the equator, results in a largely symmetrical arrangement of climatic zones on either side. A third factor consists of the cool ocean currents, which chill the winds that blow over them, and thereby influence the climate of the neighboring shores. And the fourth one could be the extensive plateau surfaces of the continent, and the absence of high and long mountain ranges. While these factors help to account for the broad climatic patterns of the African continent, there are nevertheless numerous local variations to be found from place to place within the same climatic zone. Urban areas, for example, have climates that often differ in many respects from those of the surrounding countryside. Typically experiencing higher average temperatures, urban areas also frequently have less wind and lower relative humidity. There is too little relevant data from Africa, however, to permit a detailed study of urban climates. The most important differentiating climatic element is rainfall. This, together with several other climatic elements, depends upon the characteristics of the dominating air mass. The air masses of relevance to the African climate may be broadly classified as maritime tropical, maritime equatorial, continental tropical, maritime polar, and continental polar.
African vegetation develops in direct response to the interacting effects of rainfall, temperature, topography, and type of soil. It is further modified by the incidence of fire, human agriculture, and grazing and browsing by livestock. Of the total land area of the continent, forests cover about one-fifth, woodlands, bushlands, grasslands, and thickets about two-fifths, and deserts and their extended margins the remaining two-fifths. African lowland rainforests occur along the Guinea coast of Western Africa and in the Congo Basin. The full development of this tropical formation requires continuously warm conditions, and an annual rainfall exceeding 50 to 60 inches distributed fairly evenly over the year. Mangroves include a variety of species of broad-leaved, shrubby trees, 10 to 40 feet high, that fringe muddy creeks and tidal estuaries. They require warm saline water, hence their distribution along tropical coastlines. Often they form nearly impenetrable stands, for which the easiest access is by sea. The trunks and roots are termite resistant, and they have long been favored as a building material, and for making charcoal. Toward the margins of the tropics, the vegetation cover becomes lower and thinner as the fluctuating transition to desert vegetation ensues. The Sahara has one of the lowest species densities in the world, and a sustained vegetation cover occurs only in the massifs and oases. Elsewhere the vegetation is discontinuous and consists of two main types, perennials with huge root systems and sparse aerial parts, often protected by waxy cuticles, thorns, and hairs, and ephemerals with slight root systems and little foliage, but with the ability to flower profusely immediately after occasional storms, and then to seed quickly and abundantly. The Namib is one of the world's driest deserts, but despite that, contains the strange Timbao, which may live 100 years or more. Africa includes two regions of the zoographic area known as the Paleotropical Realm, the Afrotropical Region, which comprises the continent south of the Sahara, and the southwestern part of Arabia and the Madagascan region. Africa is best known for the enormous diversity and richness of its wildlife. It has a greater variety of large ungulates, hoofed mammals, and freshwater fish than any other continent. The main group of herbivores is the African antelope, which belongs to four subfamilies of the ox family. The first subfamily is the ox-like bovinae, which is further subdivided into the African buffalo and the twist-horned antelope, including the eland, kudu, niala, and bushbuck. The second subfamily is the diker, a small primitive bovid that lives in the thickets, bush, and forests. Third is the horse antelope, further divided into saber-horned sable, roan, and oryx antelope. The deer antelope, congonies, hartebeest, topi, nu, and blesbok, all mostly inhabitants of the open plains. Probably no group of animals is more identified with Africa than its carnivora, of which there are more than 60 species. 
In addition to the better known are, Big Cats, The Lion, Leopard, and Cheetah. The others are the Wild Dog, Hyena, Wild Cat, Jackal, Fox, Weasel, Civet, and Mongoose. These predators and scavengers are vital in maintaining the ecological equilibrium of the areas that they inhabit. The primates include some 45 species of Old World monkeys, as well as two of the world's great apes, the chimpanzee and the world's largest ape, the gorilla. South of the Sahara the bird life includes nearly 1,500 resident species, to which must be added another 275 species that are either resident in northwestern Africa, or else are winter migrants. The migrants once totaled perhaps 2 billion individuals, but their numbers have been reduced considerably by severe droughts and by human land use and predation. Birds are mainly of old world families. The most noteworthy are perhaps the ostrich, shoebill, hammercop, secretary bird, and taracos. There are many avian predators of land mammals, including eagles, hawks, and owls. Reptiles, of which there are few endemic families, have mainly old world affinities. Those most likely to be seen include lizards of the agamid family, skinks, crocodiles, and tortoises. Within the African realm, lizards of the iguana family and boa constrictors occur only in Madagascar. Large vipers are abundant and varied, certain species have extremely toxic venom. Until they acquired firearms, humans made relatively little impact on animal numbers or, with some exceptions, their range. From the last half of the 19th century, however, and particularly since 1940, direct or indirect human wastage of Africa's animal life has been intense, and has reduced stocks considerably. The antelope known as the Zambian black lechwe, for example, believed to have numbered 1 million in 1900, had been reduced to less than 8,000 by the late 20th century, and the population of African elephants declined from 2 million in the early 1970s to some 600,000 by 1990, largely because of poaching for the ivory trade. Many countries have now set aside large tracts as national parks, game reserves, or forest reserves. Of these parks, only some are large enough to be self-contained ecosystems, and most have been set aside to accommodate large mammals. In East Africa, there are also sanctuaries for birds and marine organisms. The conservation of vegetation is undertaken mainly in forest reserves but also in national parks. In addition, a number of countries are attempting to conserve wildlife by refusing export licenses for certain kinds of skins, especially those of the leopard, cheetah, and zebra.
Thank you so much for watching this video. Please don't forget to give a like, share, and subscribe.